welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm a full-time artist and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about acrylic markers. Now this is a medium that I've really gotten into lately but I'm absolutely still a beginner so I've only been playing with them for around a couple of months but it's been really interesting to see how they fit into my work and I've definitely found a few differences between the brands. So today I'm going to talk through them, show you how they layer and how I can put different things on top because I am a mixed media artist, as well as talking about price points and then I'll show you how I use them in a landscape at the end. If you're interested in acrylic markers, I hope this video is helpful and let's jump right in. So here is my pouch of acrylic markers. Like I said, I've got quite a few different brands here. Obviously, it's not an extensive list, but I really do think that it will be interesting to show you the differences because there are definitely differences in the way that they go down and how they layer. So I'll be showing that today and then I'll be creating a piece at the end. So in terms of the brands that I have, I've got some Liquitex markers. I've tried to get them in the same size, but I'll talk about the Posca ones, which are slightly different in a minute. So these are the Liquitex Professional Markers. I have two from the Molotow range. This is the 15mm, which is just like the Liquitex. Then we've got the Posca, which I mentioned. Now these are only the 8mm because I found that the 15mm have a lot smaller shade range, which is a shame. So that's definitely something to think about just means that the nibs are slightly smaller for these, but I prefer the colours. So again, I'll show you how the nibs differ in a minute. And then the last ones I want to show you are these Montana acrylic markers. Now these ones I filled myself, so I'll talk about that as well. Okay, so this is the selection I'll be testing today. So first up, let's talk about nibs. Now these have all been in use, so I don't have completely brand new ones of each, but I will show you the difference in size. So they definitely have different profiles. I'll hold this up so you can see. These ones are the most similar. So this is the Liquitex and the Molotow. You can see that they're sort of like a rounded arch, but they're not completely round. They're a bit more squared off. This is the Posca. Again, this is the 8mm, but this has a slight angle to it. I can't compare the 15mm because I don't have any. And then this is the, it's a very well used this one, but this is the Molotow. So you can see that's more like a very rounded arch. So compared to the first two, it's a little bit more circular. So when I turn this to the side, like so this is a completely top down view of these. These are called eight to 15 mil because this bit is obviously eight and this bit is 15. So. I think it will be interesting to swatch these to show the different marks because this one is a lot rounder so you won't get this exactly the same. So I'm just going to be using my Royal Talons Art Creation sketchbook just to swatch these in and show you the differences. So let's start with the Liquitex. Now when you do get acrylic markers, they I have got a Montana here which I haven't used before. They look like this and I've also got a new Posca which I can show you. So. They're completely blank at first and then you have to pump them. So it goes up and down and you just pump them like this. And you have to do that for quite a while until the paint inside fills this little nib and then it floods it with color and then it looks like this. So let's bring these over here. So like this is the Liquitex and I do need to pump it because I haven't used it recently. So you just sort of push it down and then it does need a good shake, you can see that's quite watery. So I find that all of them need a good shake beforehand, so let's do that off camera. This is a, another issue that I found is that it can get very messy, so um, especially because when I use them I do like to smudge, so that's something to think about. Now this one is really wet and runny, so consistency is another thing, but you can see here, you can actually get really thin lines by using the edge, and I find that really helpful as well for Although I mostly use it for base, you can actually do some line work with it because the firmness of this like little sponge bit is pretty firm. This is the Molotow. 
So again, I need to pump it a little bit. These are the most recent ones. But again, it's slightly thicker line work, I find. And that's that one. And then the Posca. Obviously, this is a smaller 8mm nib, so I can't get super smooth. But you can definitely see the consistency difference here. So I will do a couple of other colours just to try and make it fair. And then the Montana. So these are ones that I've mixed myself. And this is similar, so... When I do it top down, whereas the other ones which were a lot more squared off, you get that sort of mark, and this one you don't because it is a round sort of rounded edge. But you can go really thin with these as well. So let's talk about these Montana markers because I filled them myself. So they, you can get them pre-done in the colours like this. Um, you can see here where I haven't mixed it. This is the shock pink. But what I love about the Montana is that I can mix my own colours and that's what really appealed to me because sometimes with acrylic markers they're way too bright for my personal artwork and my preference. So to fill them you get an empty acrylic marker like this and you get these little things and these are the refills. So this is a white so I've gone through that but you just sort of squeeze it in here and mix it up and you create your own shades. It is a bit of trial and error. I have filmed a video where I filled my own and shown the process over on my Patreon if you're interested. But that's what really appealed to me with my Montana markers. And I do have quite a few. They are messy, they great to layer, so I haven't had any issues with that. And sometimes they can be a little bit more runny. I think that depends on how much white you put in. One of the questions I get asked a lot is if you can just put normal acrylic paint in, but I would say that you can't. These aren't just filled with acrylic paint, these are very, very runny. So they put an extender in it so obviously it doesn't dry up in the tube because um, it's acrylic paint. So you can't just put acrylic paint in, it would be way too thick. So these little refills are quite expensive but I have been finding that the pens are lasting a good amount of time. I have also heard of people putting ink and gouache in but I personally haven't tried it. So let's try and swatch some other colours because as you can see here the consistency is quite different. I find that the Posca and the Montanas have got a really thick coverage whereas the Liquitex and the Molotow are a lot thinner. And you can definitely see here it looks more like watered down paint compared to like this Posca line. So this is the Liquitex, the bright aqua green. So again... I'm just going to put down some marks here. This is generally a bit too bright for me, so I tend to always layer things on top. And I do find with acrylic markers in general, I wish that they had different colours. I know that Molotow do do a, a really nice green, but again, it doesn't come in this size. So I think they come only in the smaller nib sizes, which is a shame because I wish that they did all the colours in all of the different nib sizes. So this is the Molotow, it's a very very similar colour to that Liquitex. But again, you can see that it's soaking in the paper. Now this isn't very thick sketchbook paper, this is 140 GSM, and you can really see how it's sinking in and coming through on the other side, especially with that Molotow compared to the Liquitex. But you can see how it's sort of sinking in and creating that effect where the water is soaking into the page, whereas the Posca I find doesn't do that. So let's test a, let's test a brown. And the consistency is a lot more like acrylic paint, I'd say, with the Poscas. So the opacity is a lot more consistent. Obviously you see where I've gone over it, but compared to the ones above, I find that these are a lot, they seem a lot thicker. And then I'll do it with my green Montana. And I just find that the density of these are quite different. So that's one of the things I first noticed when I started using acrylic markers was the difference between the brands. So hopefully that's helpful for you to see the difference in consistency. And I also want to show you how wet they can be because they do dry differently because of their difference in like the paint inside. So obviously over here, some of this Liquitex is still wet. Less so on this one, but I can also feel a difference 
this one feels slightly sticky. The Molotow has dried pretty well, that doesn't seem to be coming off. And then the Posca and the Montana are definitely most alike in terms of once they're down, they dry really quickly. Whereas the Liquitex, I think because it is like a thinner sort of paint, you have more time to be able to smudge it. Now, like I said there, I could definitely feel a difference. And that's something that I've seen other people talk about as well, which is layering. So let's do another page and I'm gonna put down some swatches of all the colors. Oh, here's a really good example here. So you can see from all of the things and colors that I put down, this Liquitex one came through on the other side, but this Liquitex here didn't come through on the other side. So again, I think it does depend on shade range as well as the brand. So over here, I'll probably put down a Posca. So this is a very well loved Posca. So let's compare that to a brand new one. You can see that the nib does soften, so I won't be able to get as smooth marks as I can on this one than I can on this one because this has been well loved and I use it over loads of different mediums. So I'm just going to put this down and I'll put this as well. So this is the slate grey. Okay, so those are the pens down. You can see that the Montana and the Posca dried pretty instantly. You can see I've obviously just put this Liquitex down, but it's a lot wetter. This is the Molotow. So again, that feels more like a water-based paint. It kind of feels like gouache the way that I'm putting it down because it's seeping so much through the page. And there's the Posca. So on the other side, you can see slightly that the Molotov is coming through, and on the other side of this one, the burnt sienna of the Liquitex is showing through, but that's a different shade. So the um, other one, which is the bright aqua green, didn't. So again, I think it does depend on the pigments in the pen. And if you are putting down a huge amount of acrylic marker, then I think you do need a sketchbook with thicker paper. So let's see how they work with some coloured pencils and some neo colours over the top and we'll see how they layer. So I've just grabbed a couple of colours. I've got a white, a red in coloured pencil and then two blues in the neo colour. So let's start over here with the Posca. Now I use this a lot for life drawing, this beige, for doing skin tone and I find that pencils layer really nicely on top. And here's the darker shade, and I find that white works really well on top as well. The red, less so obviously, because it is going on a darker colour, but it's quite a matte surface, so I don't find any issues there. And it's the same with Neo Colours. I find this one it makes a really nice base. And you can definitely see the difference there with the darker background with the Neo Colours. I really love how opaque Neo Colours are. Now for the Molotow, obviously where I turn the page I've got a little bit of the Liquitex because that's still not dried. But again it's a very matte surface so that's not an issue. Let's try the white, that's going over, that's very similar to the Posca but it is more streaky underneath. Now it definitely is struggling more on this one because the paper feels so wet underneath. But it's still very matte, it just feels like I put watercolour down instead of acrylic. Now the Neo colour. No problems there. And the lighter blue. So that's layered really nicely. I do find that they're both given matte surface so I can layer on top of it. But you definitely have to be careful with the paper. 
especially for the Molotto. Now onto the Montana. So again, it feels very matte. I don't think that will have any issues. So the red and the white. That feels like a really nice base. There's absolutely no issues there. And these are very dry. Now the Liquitex I find is the exception to the rule. So these have all dried very matte and it's easy to layer. Whereas the Liquitex feels slightly sticky where it's still a little bit wet and also feels like it's glossy. So this one has a sheen to it. Now I don't know if my Liquitex for this colour hasn't mixed up properly but there's definitely less of a sheen in this one but that one was quite watery. So let's use our pencils on top. This one is okay but this one is definitely not, so that's an interesting issue. Let's put down another colour of liquid tape just to see if this one's an exception. No, so that one still feels very watery and I can see instantly like the Molotow it's sunk straight into the page and it's come through. But that one definitely doesn't feel as sticky or as glossy as this one. So I expect that the pencils will go over that fine, but I need to wait for it to dry. Let's put our white on top of there. So that one's fine. And that's not too bad on the white. And then Neo colours. Generally I find Neo colours go over lots of things, so that's not too much of an issue. But I've definitely heard other people say that Liquitex does dry slightly glossy, and I definitely agree, but I think it depends on the shades. So this is my raw umber and also my burnt sienna and they feel more like watercolory, similar to the Molotow whereas this bright aqua green has definitely got that stickiness to it so it is more like I'm using actual acrylic paint but with a glossy finish. You can see that the red definitely struggled, you can't even tell that that's a red pencil but the white and the neo colours worked out okay. This is on the burnt sienna shade and that's layered okay. And then here is a close-up of the Montana, the Posca, and the Molotow. So I find it really interesting how different they are, because I definitely have specific preferences that I prefer. I absolutely love my Montana markers, but they are quite expensive, and I'll run through the prices for everything in a minute, as well as the shade ranges. I think Montana would be my preference all the time, because it's just so customizable. I can mix up my perfect shade and my perfect palette. I've got quite a few of these that I've mixed up and these are like my go-to shades that I use in all of my landscapes. So I really like that and I also love how matte they are and how opaque you can get. The Posca would be my next go-to. I really love how quick they are to go down. Similar with the Montana, it gives a really nice matte finish. I do wish that they had more shades in the 15mm so I have to use 8mm but Again, I find it lays down really nicely and I can lay it on top with all my different mediums. Now the Molotow is quite a new brand for me and I definitely found it different to the others because it does create more of that watercolour-y effect and it does take longer to dry. I find that when I am working in my sketchbook a lot, I reach for these brands because this one does sink into the paper more and it feels like the paper loses its strength. And then lastly, the Liquitex. I would say that I wouldn't buy any more of these simply because I find them a little bit inconsistent. As you can see the different shades here created different effects and I really don't like the glossiness and the stickiness from that bright aqua green. I don't mind these, they definitely remind me of the Molotow, but again I'm not really looking for a watery effect in my sketchbook. I want really matte opaque colour to lay down, which I prefer from the Montana and the Posca. So. If I wanted this sort of effect then I just use gouache, whereas with the Montana and the Posca I can get that properly acrylic paint look. Now this Liquitex should have dried by now, so let's see how it layers. So definitely similar to that burnt sienna one. I do find it interesting how the different shades af affect the like, consistency, but obviously that's because of pigments and things. So that's laid absolutely fine on there. And this one doesn't feel sticky or glossy at all like this one did. 
but without having like the full shade range I can't test them all out but I do think it's really helpful to see from a beginner's perspective the differences and obviously I'm still very new to using them but I think it's really helpful to share what I found. Okay so let's talk about specs and price for each of these. I'm going to start with the Molotow. So these are refillable which I really like and I guess you could make your own shade if you mix them up but they're not generally advertised as that. They have six different nib sizes, so different shapes of these, and these are the one for all markers. There are 50 shades, which I think is pretty impressive, but not in all of the nib sizes. So I'll put on screen how many are in this size, because this is the 15 mil, and they're not all available in this color in this size. So that's a shame, and I do hope that they do extend their color range to be greater in this bigger chisel shaped nib. These retail at around £8.25, so I'd say definitely up at the higher end of the scale. And interestingly, I did see that these are acrylic based, whereas these ones are water based. Yeah, these say on it water based acrylic, but the Molotow is definitely water based. Next up, we've got the Liquitex. Liquitex only comes in two nib sizes, but again, 50 colours, so quite a lot. And these are £7.20, so less than this one by almost a pound, but obviously it depends where you're buying them from, and a similar amount of shade range. Again, I'll check if you can get all of the nibs in the colour range. So next up we've got the Poscas. So obviously this is the 8mm chisel shaped nib, and these are £5.75, but obviously it's because it's a smaller nib, so the like for like with the sort of 15 mil XXL Posca nib, they are £7.50. So a little bit more than the Liquitex, but still a lot less than the Molotow. These Poscas come in nine nibs, so they've got the biggest amount of range in terms of the different nibs that you want. But for me, because I use them for backgrounds, I much prefer the bigger ones. Now the reason why I get these is because the 8K, which is what these are, they come in 35 colors whereas the XXL nib they only come in 10 colors So I think if the bigger ones to match the size of here came in more of these different shades I definitely get those but it's a shame that again it's limited because of the nib size And then last up we've got the Montana markers. These are the most expensive. These are £8.80 for a filled one Obviously, it's less for the empty marker. So if we just bought this it's slightly less but the, then obviously you have to buy all of the different colours and fill it up, so it does get expensive. They have five different sort of nibs and shapes, and they come in 24 inks, which again, you can refill and mix up your own shades. Like I said, I don't think these stop you from like refilling them with your own colours. I think that they're all possible too, except I don't know about the Posca. That one seems like it's really firmly closed, whereas these ones have these extra little bit that you can take off. And I do think that you can mix up with your shades, but obviously it'll be very messy. Whereas the Montana, its main sort of selling point is that you do refill them and mix them yourself. And I also think that that's why it's got that higher price point. So just to recap, we've got from low to high. For the Liquitex, it was £7.20. I'll do the like for like with the Posca, so the XXL nib, which was £7.50. Then we've got the Molotow for £8.25 and the Montana at £8.80. So I definitely feel like this is quite an expensive medium. I think that it's not one to just go all out and buy all of the shades. I think, as with all of the things that I recommend, I'd suggest going for a single item and seeing how you find it. Perhaps you prefer the more watery ones compared to the more opaque ones, and so that's how I've built up my collection and that's how I've started to get into acrylic markers. I know that there are definitely shades that I wouldn't use and shades that I do and so I wouldn't want to buy a big set. I like to tailor the shades that I get and I also do find it really interesting to see the difference. So that being said, I'm going to show you how I use acrylic markers and I'm going to be sharing a process video now so you can see how I put them into my art and how they all layer on top. So I'm going to be working again in my Royal Talent sketchbook and I'm using a reference from a book called The British Isles. I'll leave a link down below. But I've been really enjoying using this book recently for landscape references and that's what I'm going to be drawing today. So generally I use the acrylic markers as my base layer to mark out all of the big shapes. 
and I really like using the markers for this because obviously I can go quite small with them but I can also fill the page really quickly. In this example I'm not using them in like a huge scale, I have enjoyed using them in my A4 sketchbook as well, but as you can see I'm kind of using the side of the nibs here and smudging them out. Generally this is how I will simplify an image, so I tend to group things together in terms of colour and then I'll lay down that colour first. So you can see that I did the building first, then I went on to the greens, and I'm using the Molotow one here for the flowers, and then again I'm going around it. And I tend to pick up whichever colour I need so I don't stick to the one brand. I find that they mix really well, and so there's not been any issues with that. One of the things I really enjoy doing with them is smudging them out. So you can see it just kind of softens the texture a little bit, and that can create a really nice result. I've really enjoyed using that technique on animals, so when I've drawn owls it's really nice to create sort of a more feathered texture. So I just go around the page and one of the things that I really enjoy from using these acrylic markers is how loose that they make me. I'm always trying to loosen up in my work and try not to be too tight and too precise, and having these acrylic markers have really helped with that. Now when I was drawing this I was in a bit of a rush, so I think I had about 15 minutes for this spread, so I think I can tell that I was working quite quickly, but even when I am doing that on purpose, when I'm using a timer, again I find that that helps keep me loose, and the thing that I'm absolutely loving about the markers is just how quick they are. I don't have to get a paint palette out and put down paint for my tubes, I can just grab these and go, and I can just layer them on top, they dry pretty quickly, and it's just made creating art feel really, really easy, and that's something that's felt really good lately. So you can see that I'm moving onto the water, you can definitely see how messy it is here. I'm using the blue that I mixed up in my Montana markers, and again, like alternating where I've left too much white space, I'm coming back in with my pens, but I'm not too worried if there's white of the paper showing through. So this is how it's looking at this point. This is all of the acrylic markers done. This is all the main shapes that I wanted to get down before I then come in with my coloured pencils and my neo colours to add on details on top. If you've seen my work before, you'll know this is my standard method. I'll always put down the colours first and like the basic shapes before then coming in with the details and texture. And it's no different with the acrylic markers. I'm just using them in pen form instead of with a brush. So I didn't have any issues with my coloured pencils layering on top. As you saw with my swatch tests, there wasn't really an issue because they do dry quite matte, and I didn't use the bright aqua green Liquitex here, so I didn't have that glossiness. But with all the others, there was definitely no issues with them mixing, and I can be quite heavy with my pencils on top and not have anything tear the page underneath. Again with the coloured pencils, this is sometimes where I get a little bit more detailed and a little bit tighter, but again because I was in a rush I think I was able to keep things really loose. I'm adding on a few tiny details here at the back for windows for the houses, and also just adding on a bit more texture on the grass. I don't want to cover up all of the white because I don't really mind that, but it was nice to have that over the top and it just gives a bit more interest to the picture. So now I'm coming in with my Neo Colours, again dotting these around, adding on this lemon yellow over the grass, and then this orangish yellow for a little bit of warmth back there. I definitely could have gone more detailed with this picture and been a bit more neater with it and added more details, but I really just wanted to show you how loose these acrylic markers make my work and how quick they are, so I didn't have to fuss about with a palette or anything, so it was really quick and I was pretty pleased with the result. It is super messy, but I hope that you enjoy seeing this and how I use it in my work. If you use acrylic markers and are a lot more experienced than I am, please do share your thoughts down below in the comments. I'd love to know what you think of the markers and if you have other brands you prefer and would like to recommend. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later!